Right. So what I would like to do is kind of take a step back since we um, talk about Alzheimer's disease. So what, what is the pathology and what is this relationship between you know, the tangles and the plaque and then the neuroinflammation? Yes. Yeah, so the amyloid plaques are these sticky, I like to call them boulders of material outside of nerve cells that accumulate. All of us make amyloid at some point. And the tangles are made up of this protein tau. The amyloid's made up of something called amyloid beta protein or A beta for short. And it comes from APP, the pre amyloid precursor protein. Tangles come from the protein called tau that's inside the nerve cell. And it acts to provide structure to the nerve cell. Um, it's, it's almost like if you picture a railroad and a railroad tie, picture that railroad going down the axon of the nerve cell so proteins can be delivered. Tau is the stabilizer, it's the railroad tie. And it falls off the railroad track and it, start, it, they, it starts to stick together and forms what are called the tangles, these twisted, wispy, um, abnormal products inside the nerve cell and the nerve cell starts to die. And what we know from what are called resilient brains is that you can have a lot of plaques and tangles, as many as Alzheimer's, as many as you would say, this is Alzheimer's, but you will not get dementia if there's no neuroinflammation. So this, we know this because we see in rare cases, but we see this once in a while, somebody dies in the eighties, they were perfectly fine while they were alive, no dementia, no cognitive problems. Then you look in the brain and the pathologist says, whoa, look at all these plaques and tangles. This is Alzheimer's. I say, no, the person was fine. The answer as to why they didn't have dementia is always the same in these rare cases, no neuroinflammation. See, what has to happen is, I like to say the amyloid is the match. The tangles are the brush fires. And like brush fires, the tangles spread. They actually propagate. But without the forest fire, you don't get the disease. Neuroinflammation is the forest fire. How does that happen? As nerve cells die with tangles caused by the amyloid, the uh, other cells in the brain, which are the housekeepers, there are these glial cells, microglia, astrocytes. Mm -hmm. They're housekeepers, sentinels, and soldiers, all, all three roles. So normally they're housekeeping. While you sleep, they're eating your amyloid and clearing it out of your brain during deep sleep after you have some dreams. Mm -hmm. Every time you have a REM dream cycle, you get a rinse cycle, you get rid of the amyloid because these little glial cells kind of just eat it up and get rid of it. Now, while they're eating, if they suddenly eat something and say, ooh, I just ate a piece of a dead nerve cell, right? Now they're sentinels. They're saying, whoa, nerve cells are dying. Well, they've been evolutionarily programmed for tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of years, that when they sense nerve cells are dying because they just ate a piece of a dead one, they assume one thing, whether it's true or not, there must be an infection. And we have to wipe this part of the brain out so that infection won't spread. And, and the reason for this is, you know, Tens of thousands of, or hundreds of thousands, hundred thousand years ago, tens of thousands of years ago, when lifespan was 25 years old, if you're 18 at the peak of your life running through the jungle and your nerve cells are dying, you don't have Alzheimer's, you've got a bad mosquito bite, you have encephalitis. So these glial cells were trained that if nerve cells are dying, there's probably an infection, wipe that part of the brain out. That process is called neuroinflammation. Mm. And that kills 10 to 100 times more nerve cells than the plaques and tangles that initiated it. So that's what we've learned. And this process takes decades. You know, if you take um, rugby players, uh, football players, boxers, they don't need amyloid to get tangles. Bangs to the head will give you tangles. In this case, the bangs to the head are the match. The brush fires, the tangles are still the result. And again, for decades, they have to spread and cause the forest fires of neuroinflammation before you get the disease. So we have a pretty good understanding of all this now. The media tends to confuse it, agitate it, try to create controversy about it. It's not the plaques, it's the tangles, it's not this, it's not that. It's all of it. It's not whether something matters, it's when it matters. It's the time course that matters. And we have to get to the point where we design drugs and therapies, and I can tell you what we're doing, that treat the right pathology at the right time and that's different for a patient who has symptoms versus someone who's 50 years old and on their way to Alzheimer's 20 or 30 years later. 
Right, which kind of leads into my next question, which is, so the uh, plaques and tangles start happening like a long time before, although I don't know if we know how long, but two to three decades. Two to three decades. How do we diagnose that these are happening? Is there any way that you can look in the brain? Can we look in the blood tests or how do, how do we see? Sure, so we have brain imaging for amyloid and tangles now. Um, anybody can get that type of test done. You have to pay out of pocket in the US because as health insurance companies say, it's not actionable. If we find out you have plaques and tangles, sorry, there's nothing we can do. Um, we can talk about the new biogen drug that there is something you can do, but it's for a very small slice of patients. Um, now there's also a blood test. Um, there's a company in St. Louis, uh, Missouri, that has a blood test that's, that's kind of complicated. It's not your typical blood test, but it can detect amyloid in the blood, in the plasma. And it's a pretty good surrogate for how much amyloid you have in your brain. Um, so I think the future will be that you'll have a blood test that will tell you like a cholesterol test where you are on your amyloid level in your brain. It'll say, boy, for your age, you're 55, you're in the upper 70th percentile for amyloid. Um, we need to get your amyloid down. We're going to give you this drug to take to bring your amyloid down, just like we manage cholesterol to manage heart disease later on. That's where we're going to go with this. Um, but in, in, and for, now for the neuroinflammation, believe it or not, we don't have very good markers yet. We don't have good tests for neuroinflammation. Um, but, 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 to, but to be honest, by the time you have neuroinflammation that's widespread, um, you already have symptoms. And at that point, you're treating neuroinflammation anyway. Right. So are there any amyloid lowering drugs that are available now, or is that kind of in trial? Well, there's one drug that was approved by the FDA in a controversial approval mm. over the last uh, six months or so, which is from Biogen. And it's called aducanumab. That's the generic, the, the brand name is Aduhelm. It's an antibody. And, it, and the story of how it came about is that about 15 years ago, my late colleague, Rob Moyer, some, for, for the aficionados, some people know Rob Moyer, first discovered that amyloid is useful in the brain um, and that it actually helps fight bacterial and viral infections. And it's a whole nother story. And Rob tragically passed away a couple of years ago with a glioblastoma at 58 years old. Before he did that work in my lab, uh, he, we found, or really he found as a part of my lab, antibodies that exist naturally mm -hmm. that are targeted against amyloid. And the more of them you had in your blood, the more protected you were against Alzheimer's disease. So these are naturally occurring autoantibodies that actually protected you against Alzheimer's. So a small company in Switzerland called Neuroimmune, uh, who run by a good friend of mine, Roger Nietzsche, they said, are you going to go after those antibodies? You know, we described them and showed them. And I said, no, probably not. And they said, well, we're, we're going to do this in our company. And they actually took the oldest old people who had no Alzheimer's and took their memory B cells that make antibodies. And they found those antibodies that we described are protective, that are targeted against the amyloid. And then they mimicked that. They reverse translated that into a therapy, a monoclonal antibody therapy that now Biogen licensed as and sells as aducanumab or aduhelm. So the FDA approved it based on two trials that Biogen did, two phase three trials. One trial worked on improving cognition incrementally. The other trial failed. But in both trials, they dramatically removed the amyloid from the brain in a matter of six months to a year. So the FDA approved it for removing amyloid and they said, now you have 10 years to show us that removing amyloid is useful. You have to do another trial. Mm. And this created a lot of controversy because this therapy is $56,000 per year. Plus you have to do imaging to make sure the patient doesn't have swelling in the brain or micro hemorrhages, which are not that common, but you have to check for those. So you add that price tag on and you're, you're approaching more toward $90,000 uh, a year, depending on where the imaging is done. Well, obviously healthcare can't afford that. And, um, and the problem is, as I said earlier, hitting amyloid is something you need to do decade or more before symptoms. 
we get into the same scenario. You need a coronary bypass. You have heart disease and you don't expect to just take a, a drug that lowers your cholesterol to make you better, right? Well, amyloid is completely analogous to cholesterol in heart disease. The amyloid comes early, it sets the fire, but by the time you have the disease, neuroinflammation, that fire is fire is blazing. You're trying to blow up the match, the amyloid. Or if you're treating tangles, you're trying to stomp out the brush fires. That's great for preventing future forest fires, but it's not going to put out the one that's, that's already burning. And that's, the, that's why it's unlikely that most patients would get better by removing amyloid. That's something you want to do early in life as a secondary prevention after you detect the amyloid. So yes, the good news is there's a drug that does it. Bad news is it's 56,000 a year. And in the US alone, there are 38 million people who have amyloid in their brain who would love to have a drug to bring it down, but not at 56,000 a year and not with the safety profile. So that's why we and others now are screening for cheap, safe alternatives to do the same thing. Uh, we've been screening repurposed drugs, natural products using our what's called Alzheimer's in a dish model, these mini brain organoids. So, but the FDA approval, as controversial as it is, opened up the next big golden era of Alzheimer's, which is finding drugs that hit amyloid cheaply and safely that can be used in the future on tens of millions of people when it will actually help stave off the disease later on. That's what we predict based on everything we know. Right. 